Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Samantha, if you don't know me. Today I'm making a little bit of a different kind of video. Um, I've been putting it off because I know it's not really gonna do well on this channel, but I've gotten enough questions about it over the past year or so that I figured I would make a video. This is obviously different content than what is usually on my channel, so I will not be offended if my regular subscribers do not watch, but hopefully this helps anyone that is just like searching for this topic in particular. <laughs> basically, I have a list on my phone that I started pretty soon after I got married that basically has like a checklist of all the things that I need to do to change my name after marriage, change my last name. I got married in March of 2021, so there were still a lot of COVID restrictions in place for a lot of these things that I had to do, so hopefully now it's not as hard to do these things, but um, just, just know that it's a long process. It can take like months to a year, um, even if you are like staying on top of it. Basically, I have a note on my phone that's just called changing my name. The other thing that this note keeps track of is my husband needed to be added onto my bank accounts and I needed to be added onto his. Um, it was mainly him being added onto mine because uh, we don't really use his old bank account anymore. Um, so there's like steps for that on this as well. Okay, so the first thing I have on here is I have a category called easy things, no documents needed. And on here I basically just listed social media sites. So I have like GroupMe, Instagram, Snapchat, my iPhone contact, um, Facebook, and email. So basically all of those things like social media sites, you don't need anything to change your name. You can just go into your profile, edit it, and change your last name. I think probably Facebook was the first thing that I changed. I changed that pretty soon after we got married, maybe like a day or two. The hardest thing on this list was the email address. I was changing a Gmail email address and like you can't just change your email address very easily. So what I did, and I think there's other ways to do this, but what I did is I just created a completely new account um, that had my new name my email and then I just had my old email just redirect everything to the new email so if anyone was emailing me on the old account it would just get sent to the new one and then I just started using the new one so like I would respond back to people with the new email and then they would have my new email and this just helped because like obviously there were tons of websites and things that were still like hooked up to the old email and so I didn't want to like lose any of that I didn't want to just cold just go on to a new email address because I might miss something. So that's what I did. At this point, since it's been a year and a half since we got married, most of my stuff is just now set up with my new email. Um, but there are still like a few random sites where I couldn't change my email and I didn't want to make new accounts on those sites. So it does still send it to that old email address. And it's helpful because you can still see which email it got sent to. So if I see, oh, it got sent to my old email address, I know that if I want to log into that website or whatever, then I have to use my old email. And it's a little bit annoying, so you might want to just like go ahead and make new accounts if you don't want to worry about that. But for me, it's only been like a few sites where I haven't been able to change the email, so it hasn't been too bad. So I have on here, Gray was moving in with me after we got married, but obviously if you're the one moving into a new place, then you're gonna have to do this. But I have a list called Gray Changing Address. So he had to change his address on a few things because he was moving in with me. He had to change his voter registration, his credit cards, and um, the post office uh, has like a thing where you can change your address and it will redirect your mail from your old address to your new address, so it makes it really easy. Um, it wasn't super easy for Gray to do that because he has the same name as his dad. So don't do that if you have the same name as someone else that you're living with because then all of his dad's mail got redirected to us. So we ended up having to just completely get rid of that change of address thing um, and not use it. <laughs> um, and he just had to like individually change his address on sites and like obviously if his parents got his mail like they would just tell us like hey you got this piece of mail and then we knew we had to change his address on wherever he got the mail from but 
The second time we moved, when we, when we moved from Virginia to Alaska, we did a change of address then and it works fine because obviously his dad didn't live with us. So just Gray's mail has now been sent to us in Alaska and my mail obviously. So it's a lot easier when you don't have that issue. Okay, so I have a list called first things. So these were the first things that I needed to do in order to like legally change my name, not just on like social media and email and stuff. So the first thing that I needed to do in order to change my name was to get multiple copies of our marriage license. To do this in the state that we lived, because I'm sure it can be different in different states, um, but we needed to just go to our courthouse and ask them. You can get like certified copies, which came with like a really small fee, like $2 per copy or something. And then you can get like regular copies that don't really cost anything, or maybe they also cost like a small amount of money, I don't know. But we probably got like two or three certified copies and like three regular copies. You probably don't need that many, but we went a little bit overboard just in case. Um, the reason you need these is because in order to change your name, you need to show that marriage license because it, at least in Virginia, shows your old name and then it shows who you're marrying. So it's like, okay, I want to take his last name. So after we got those marriage licenses, the next thing that I did was to update my social security card. I think I needed that first before I could do anything else. So um, it basically wasn't too hard. I had to fill out a form and mail it in. I think you might be able to make appointments to do that, but um, during COVID there weren't any appointments to do that. So it was all through the mail. Once that all got processed, I got the new social security card mailed back to me and yeah, I didn't have to change my number or anything. It just changed my name on it. And so it wasn't too hard. The other thing on this first things list is driver's license. So that was a big one because obviously when you're doing anything, people wanna see your driver's license. Basically you can go to the DMV website for your state and check all the requirements that you need. Basically just like search like, how do I change my name on my driver's license? And it gives you like, um, kind of step-by-step step what documents you need to bring, how to make an appointment at your DMV, and um, obviously just bring one of those copies of your marriage uh, certificate or marriage license, or whatever they're called, and then whatever other documents you need. Um, Gray came with me to the DMV because he was changing his address on his license and his voter registration, so um, that's another thing is that when you go to the DMV to change your driver's license and stuff like that, they automatically ask you like, hey, do you also want to update your voter registration? So that process got started while I was at the DMV as well. I'm sorry I'm out of breath, but I'm currently 26 weeks pregnant, so you know how it is. And then the last thing on this first things list was I wrote down notify my job. So I was working somewhere and I just wanted them to know that I was in the process of changing my name. Um, they could start changing my name in like the company sphere of influence. I don't know. Um, I don't know what to call it. They just said, hey, let us know when you get your new driver's license and send us a picture of it. Also, um, I was adding gray to my insurance at my job. So that was another thing that I notified my job about. I was like, hey, I got married and like, that's the life event. So then you can add your spouse to your insurance pretty easily. <laughs> Don't know if you're doing that, but that is something that you need to do to like within a certain time period of when you get married. So make sure you know about that if you are planning on doing that. Um, but the HR person at your job probably will be able to give you all of that information. <laughs> I have a list called Gray's Next Steps after Samantha changes her name. So he was updating car insurance for his car, adding me onto his car insurance. And then I have bank accounts for him. There were a couple bank accounts that I wanted him added onto. I have written down Costco because he wanted to get a Costco membership. And so he was waiting until I changed my name until we got the Costco membership. So we then didn't have to like go change my name in the Costco system too. <laughs> so that was just, that's just an extra thing that you may or may not have. <laughs> and then I have a note called bank accounts. Now I'm not gonna go through and tell you exactly what's on this because it's like personally our bank accounts. 
Um, but basically, I just listed any bank accounts that we had, like a checking account, savings account, um, accounts that are for like stocks and stuff, anything that he needed to be added on to, or I needed to be added on to, and also for my accounts, I needed to change my name. And this was a little bit annoying because it was like every single bank um, had a different process for this. Some of them you needed to go in and uh, meet with a person there. And then some of them you can just um, like print out a form online and mail it in and send them a copy of your marriage license and they send it back afterwards. It was kind of a little bit annoying because the process was different with everything. So I needed to check like every bank and see what the process was and figure out what documents I needed. Um, but that's just something you're gonna have to do with each individual bank. A big tip that I have is to take a picture of your marriage license and just keep it on your phone at all times because while you're in the middle of this process, things are gonna be changing. Like you might have a driver's license that says your new name on it, but you might have some credit cards that say your old name on it. And so it might be a little bit confusing sometimes. So um, if you have a copy of your marriage license on your phone and anyone questions you about anything, you can just be like, hey, like, I just got married, here's my marriage license if you like need to see it. Um, but usually people are kind of understanding about that because uh, a lot of people know that it's a hard process to completely change your name. I completely forgot to mention this, but the times that I ran into this the most was when I ever I had to show my vaccine card for my like COVID vaccines. Um, whenever I was going to like a restaurant that required the like vaccination card. I don't know how much of a big deal that's going to be anymore, but when I got vaccinated, I still had my old last name. And so obviously it's just like a paper card. There's, I mean, I could cross it out and write my new name on it, but then like that looks a little sketchy. I never figured out how to like change my name on the paper card. I never like asked, but the Virginia Department of Health had a website that had my name and it had all the vaccinations that I had received. So um, I did find a way for them to change my name on that website. So I tended to use that as much as I could unless for some reason a place needed to see my actual COVID vaccination card. So the next thing I had on my list was credit cards. Basically, I had three credit cards that I had to change my name on. I just listed them. And then it, again, it was just like the bank, uh, they all had a different procedure on how to change the name on them. Um, but most of them involve mailing in a form. So sometimes I had to mail things in, sometimes I had to talk to people on the phone. It just depended on the credit card and what the requirements were for that bank. So th I have this thing called next steps. So this is stuff that I started doing obviously after I had my driver's license and my um, social security card because a lot of these things, they're just like, oh, just send me a picture of your new driver's license. And like, that's the, that's like all they need. Obviously this is gonna be different for every person, but just to give you an idea of what's on this list, I'll read through a few of them. Um, I have ring insurance, cause my engagement ring is insured. Just needed it to be in my new name. I have utility bills, um, just lists of like utility bills that I was paying just to make sure like, you know, it's still going to their same bank account. With, um, but like the bank account has a different name on it now. Um, I have doctors. Um, basically whenever I went in for a new doctor's appointment, I was like, hey, my name changed. And they, and I just kind of checked it off whenever they like knew that my name changed. Car insurance, um, voter registration. Voter registration's on this list. Um, but obviously, like I said before, um, the DMV started that process when I was getting my driver's license. Passport, passport was a pretty big one. It took me so long to get my new passport. I've heard that it's going faster now, but around when I was trying to get a new passport, it took, it took so long. It took me probably like five months until I could get the new one. Uh, you have to like send in the old one and send in the documents and proof and you have to send in like the passport pictures that you take and then like those pictures need to be, need to have certain requirements for them. Um, and then, and then you get the new passport mailed back to you, but it just took so long for them to be able to process that. Cause I guess with COVID they had shortages of 
employees and not being able to have appointments in person was a big deal um, because normally you just go in for an appointment for your passport but this was all done through the mail. I have my insurance through my job um, that just needed to be updated like on the insurance cards. The place that I was renting from um, I just needed to notify them that hey my first of all husband's moving in, second my name is changing just in case like they need to know that for any reason. And then I have travel. So if you are like me and Gray you have an account with like every single airline and all the different like hotel chains and stuff. So on this list I have like Delta, United, Southwest, Marriott, Hilton, and then I have like <laughs> NCL, Norwegian Cruise Line, because we were in the process of like planning uh, an Alaska cruise at the time and it kept getting pushed back because of COVID. So when I started, when we started planning it, my name was my old name. And then by the time we actually went on the cruise, it was my new name. <laughs> so again, with this, the process was just different depending on the company. It was, it was interesting because a lot of them had you know, online portals where you could just say, hey, like, this is my new driver's license, let me upload you a picture. And like, sometimes they also wanted your marriage license. And then there were some that were like way harder where it was like, oh no, we need you to mail something in or we need to verify things over the phone. Um, but it, it was just interesting, they, they were all different. I actually still have a few of these that aren't checked off. Uh, they're like things that I have not used since getting married. Uh, I have like Carnival Cruise Line on here, which like, we went on a carnival cruise back when I was in high school and I guess I have an account with them but have not gone on a cruise with them since. <laughs> um, so my name is still my old name in there. And then like a few other travel companies that I haven't done anything for. And then at the end I just have a list called other websites. So I just wrote down like the websites that I usually use, the places I usually shop. Um, if you have like rewards accounts in places I have like Target, Panera, Tropical Smoothie, Papa John's Pizza, HelloFresh, Amazon, Venmo. Obviously it depends on the person which of these websites is most important to you. So just kind of go through and think about the places that you usually shop or you have like rewards accounts with and just think about those and put them down and you can change those as you go. Like that is not a big deal. You do not have to stress about that. Usually you're just going in there and changing your email address um, and changing your name. Like a lot of those, you don't need to upload anything to prove it. Sometimes it's easier just to make a full new account if you'd rather, or just keep using your old account with your old name. It's not really that big of a deal if something gets mailed to you with a different name on it sometimes. I have plenty of these things that are not checked off either that I know about that are just like, uh, I don't really feel like changing them. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, I'm a year and a half out and there are still things on this list that aren't checked off and they might not ever get checked off, but um, most of the things are checked off, like obviously I've changed my name, I've changed it on my driver's license, I've changed it on my social security card, voter registration, and passport, those are like the big ones. So my advice to you is just kind of make a list on your phone. I have like an iPhone, so I have like the little feature where you can like do the check marks <laughs> and everything. And just like figure out what's important for you, check them off as you go, and you can take as long as you need. Like obviously, if you're not planning on leaving the country in a really long time, not that important for you to get an updated passport. I will say if you're going on a honeymoon right after you get married, keep your old name. Don't try to change all of that within a day because that's not going to happen. Um, it was kind of funny because when my husband and I went on our honeymoon, everything was booked under my name, so they kept uh, calling us like Mr. and Mrs. my old last name and so it was kind of annoying um, if you want to be called Mr. and Mrs. your new last name book everything under your new husband's name or you know whoever's name you're taking but yeah I was the one that had like the rewards accounts for the hotels we stayed at so it was booked under my name. <laughs> there are other ways to do this process. I think you can um, sign up for like a service and pay a certain amount of money and they will, and you can send them certain documents and they will change everything for you. I know it can be really overwhelming, so it's a great option for people if they are not, if they do not want to stress about it. 
Um, for me, I just didn't want to have to pay that money, so I did it myself, and I really don't think it's that stressful once you, you know, put things in order and figure out which things do I do first and which things don't matter as much. Like I said, biggest things that matter are the social security card and the driver's license, and then after that is done, things can, you can take as much time as you want to change everything else, basically. It's not like you need to race and try to get all of it done at once. Some people take a year or two until they have everything changed. So don't stress too much about it, but I hope that this video helps a little bit in like getting you organized and figuring out what kind of things need to go on your list. And uh, yeah, good luck changing your name. <laughs> if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you want to check out my channel, I do videos on cancer related things because I am a cancer survivor and uh, pregnancy related things because I'm currently pregnant. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check out my channel. And yeah, that's all. Bye.